start with this this uh, blog. Uh, I I didn't plan to start here. I've got a, a slide presentation, but it's Phil's talk on uh, in, uh, uh, informal learning that uh, got me thinking about this one. This is a uh, uh, one of my co-moderators, Rose Bard, uh, about playing Minecraft versus learning the language through Minecraft. And one of the examples she gives is in her uh, trying to learn Mandarin. So you, you might ask, well, because I, I think my talk really is going to be about, it's hard to get at why students, why is Minecraft so useful for students? And well, it's this is obviously something she's doing as an informal experience. And she talks about how she uh, uh, used the wrong kanji here and there, and she got feedback about it. So uh, anyway, that's that's just that's something I'm going to refer to it in my uh, in my presentation. So um, we'll come to it there. But anyway, that was just one thing that that I thought I, I, I got from Phil's presentation. OK, so let's see. Here we go. Can you can you see my slideshow? OK. Yes, no, feedback please. My, can you hear me? Yes, yes, okay. we can see oh, thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so uh, anyway, I'm, by the way, I'm starting a, a timer here so I can see when it's uh, 30 minutes is gone. Okay, so anyway, we're going to uh, talk about um, uh, engaging learners and teachers and learners through EVO Minecraft MOOC because I, it's about engaging teachers because what I really do is I, I sort of more in the teach training aspect of it uh, because I, I'm retired from teaching now, so I don't actually have students. But uh, you can go to learningtogether.net and uh, see, uh, I'll be blogging, I'll put the video online there. It's one of uh, our Learning Together episodes. I think I posted something about uh, Claire's uh, Brim Ng, which is also a Learning Together uh, episode. So uh, that was where that came from. Uh, anyway, let's see. So I just put in the text chat that you can follow the slides. And also, I, I always like to write what I'm doing before I give it. So the slides link to the prose write up and the prose write up links to the slides. So that's in the text chat. Uh, you should be able to have find that. Before I start, I want to introduce my co-moderators because I can't actually, this is a, I'm the presenter, but there's actually this support behind me. There's Aaron Schwartz who runs the server, Don Carroll who wanders all over it, finds all kinds of things about it. We have uh, some of the moderators are uh, family teams, family units. Uh, Maddie Tsai is one of our most prolific moderators and he sometimes brings his mom along, Jane Xian, who's also a researcher. And Jeff Kuhn ran our first server in uh, when we started in 2015. Kim Harrison uh, organizes VSTE, that's uh, Virginia Society for Technology and Education, which comes up in the presentation sometimes. Uh, Laura Briggs uh, is one of her associates, but Laura has uh, created our spawn point on our server. Uh, Mariana is another of the co-moderators, but actually the real co-moderator is Philip and her other son, Domagoy. And um, they wrote an art. She wrote an article explaining how her sons learned uh, English fluently. So we'll come to that in a little bit. Mircea Patrescu is uh, uh, someone who does coding, teaches coding, and is uh, a magician in Minecraft. We learned a lot from him. Rose Bard, I just showed you her blog. Her son Emmanuel. Uh, she explains in her blog that Manuel kind of grew up with English and is now having to learn Portuguese. They live in Brazil. So uh, in any event, we'll learn more about Rose, uh, my lovely assistant, Bobby, and myself. That's uh, Bobby goes by Bobby Bear in Minecraft. And then we have a couple of people who weren't actually moderators this session, Maha Abdul Monim, who actually we know her as Olive Tree, Olive Tree Grove or Olive Tree Lighthouse, uh, and Dakota Redstone, who are uh, advise us a lot. They do a lot of really neat things with us. So I just wanted to mention them and make sure they get lots of credit. So if you're on these slides, you can find our portal page at minecraft.org. And uh, let's see if I can move my video out of the way there. Okay, so there's an arrow down here pointing because on the if you go to the minecraft.org, minecraftmook.org, sorry, uh, you'll come out on this page and there's a sidebar there. And if you go down the sidebar, let's see, you'll come out to the archives 
our, our archives, we archive, I archive everything, I should say. <laughs> uh, we started in 2015, and you can go there and see our live sessions to the 15, 18. Um, that's the sidebar link. Let me go one more slide down because actually these are the live links are here. That was a, an image of the sidebar, but this, these are the live links. So you can get our history and also our current uh, history. Uh, I believe it's at this link here. No, that's just going to the, that's going to the portal page. Well, that'll come up in a minute. So uh, this last session, our seventh session of EVO Minecraft MOOC, we archived it quite a bit. And, uh, and I got videos and uh, started teasing out from the videos, associating the videos with certain uh, affordances of Minecraft that I think are very important. But uh, going back a few years, how did we get started? Okay, so this is in, in 2014. Uh, this is Philip, Mariana's son. Uh, Philip wrote an article about uh, how her son became very fluent in English. And um, the son, Philip, gave a presentation at the ResCon conference. It is, it is a, he was 11 years old at the time, and he gave this presentation to adults. She describes in this article how he became uh, so proficient in English through connecting with his, uh, his uh, peers, have, starting his own, uh, his own uh, YouTube channel. And also, I, I did the literature research, and in the literature research, I um, came upon Jeff Kuhn. And interestingly, this is, I, he, had, he had made this presentation called The World is Not Enough, um, and he gave it at IATEFL in 2014. And um, it, basically, he used Minecraft to create uh, scenarios, situations where uh, zombies were attacking in order to get his students thinking about writing about disaster management. Now, an interesting thing here is if you, uh, when I go to my websites where I, or I try to find his presentation, which was recorded at the time, it's no longer there. Uh, but because I put it on Learning Together, I made an MP3. And so if you click here, you can find the MP3. I think it's the only, the only extant uh, vestige of his presentation that I was able to recover. So it's nice to you know keep things in the community. Um, he 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 created the first server in 2015 for EVO Minecraft book, and then after that, his colleague at Ohio University, uh, Aaron Schwartz, took it over. We wrote an article also. Here's the article. Well, actually, I guess you can you can click on the article yourself, but it's called Participatory Culture is Professional Development Preparing Teachers to Use Minecraft in the Classroom, and in the article, we said that this, that why did we make Minecraft MOOC? It's a space for teachers to explore the multiplayer game Minecraft as a virtual world for learning and learn how to adapt what we learn in their classrooms. I could probably step back, I should step back and say that I started using Minecraft in, uh, uh, Minecraft was first released in 2011. I think before that, there were alpha and beta versions that teachers were using and podcasting about them. And I started listening to these podcasts and I became very interested in using Minecraft uh, with uh, students. And, but I couldn't, the problem was I couldn't find a place where I could go and experience it because to learn Minecraft, you need to have a community. And uh, if you're, if the teachers are have communities with students, you can't crack into them. So that was my idea in 2015 was to form, to make an EVO session. EVO is Electronic Village Online. And all you have to do to make an EVO session is just declare one, propose one. And so my EVO session was to um, start an EVO Minecraft MOOC. And um, I got people like Aaron and Jeff and Mariana and her children to come and teach each other, teach me really, uh, how to play Minecraft. So that's how I cracked into Minecraft. And seven years later, I'm starting to figure it out. Uh, that's an exaggeration, actually. Uh, so anyhow, if you want to find the videos that we created just this time around, you can go to our live events page, and you can see there's quite a number of videos here. This is a table of contents to them. So I tried to archive things. Um, uh, I, I made a presentation 
at um, the last the TESOL conferences that's just finished the um, TESOL 2021. It's a virtual conference, and that recording is there. It's going to come up in the presentations. Other things that we did. Uh, this is Mercea dragging his horse uh, around. Uh, there's his horse. Okay, so. Um, this is a, a, an interesting adventure where Dakota Redstone guided us through um, on the Minecraft server to a place that you rarely go to. It's called the end. It's where the end dragon lives. To get there, you really have to be part of a community. So that's um, what, what I'm going to do. I'm going back to that, that long presentation I made for the EVO Minecraft MOOC. It's interesting to listen to, I think. There's a 10 minute version that uh, had to be submitted to Flipgrid. You could only get 10 minutes in Flipgrid. So to make the 10 minute version, I had to make a long version where I just kind of rattle on for 20 minutes and then cut down to the, the 10 minute version. I made a, 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 a wiki for it and that's here. Um, so at the wiki, I have some show notes showing how what I did is I extracted from that live events page lots of videos uh, and then queued them at certain spots. Uh, like for example, this one is queued with, uh, this one I used up to here and this one was about taming cats. And so, it, and I, I gave a rationale for why I use these videos, these video snippets. There's 13 video snippets from uh, all the videos we recorded. I just grabbed 13 instances and use them in my presentation. We'll have a look at some of those right now, but for each of these, there's a reason that I included it. For example, here's a, a kid named Finch. He's an elementary school kid explaining to me why, uh, how to make redstone work. And that's obvious that Finch um, is quite uh, motivated to explain this to a teacher. So, um, why use Minecraft? Okay, so I kind of uh, uh, the, the, some of the reasons that that are in those notes, like as you can see here, this this uh, video we're looking at right there. I think it's actually a video. It's about using maps to find buried treasure, and to do that, you have to learn. Uh, you have to learn a, a bit about Matt, or you have to, you, it's critical thinking, critical thinking skills and applying actually science, uh, clear things like that. Okay, so it, it's uh, it's very creative. What, what, are, what are the affordances of Minecraft? It's creative, everyone is a builder in Minecraft. So when you go into Minecraft, you can start making things and you can change your world. Whereas like if you go to Second Life, um, it's you're more a passive. Uh, you can sit in a chair or you can follow the prescribed. Sometimes you go on a ride and you see things and you learn things that way. And, and it's a good place to talk to people. Well, Minecraft is too. It's a good place. Well, actually, you can't talk in Minecraft, but we use Discord. It's a, a third party chat, a VOIP a place where it, is, it has also a community space and you can stream to it and things like that. It's fun. Uh, Phil mentioned the fun aspect. Uh, it's highly gamified and also game-based. That's a little bit of difference there. Gamified means that um, it keeps you in the game by keep, constantly rewarding you and upping your level. But it's game-based in that teachers, because everyone's creative, the teachers can modify the environment as well. So teachers can create places, which I'll show you examples, but teachers can create places where that will pull uh, students into them, hopefully. It's community-based. That was what uh, we're, what uh, Mariana Schmoltzitz talks about with her son, Philip. All the extensive network that he uses to, uh, to communicate with other people and the resources that are there, the participatory culture that uh, Jeff Kuhn and I write about uh, there's a participatory culture around Minecraft that's unique to Minecraft, sort of uh, transcends the community of the people that you're using Minecraft in. Uh, it encourages communication with students. So students like to talk about what they're doing in Minecraft. They like to talk to you, they talk to each other, they make their own multimedia productions. They have conversations with teachers and peers through whatever 
uh, remote chat you're using, or if you're there with them in the class, you can talk to them about that, or they, they create things in class and um, they like to write about what they create. It encourages research because um, all we, well, actually you can just, how do I blink in Minecraft? That's a kind of research that I use often. How do I make a, an arrow in Minecraft? How do I use it? How do I find a map in Minecraft? Um, you put those, I've, I've got that thing that going all the time in Google. So you have to read about Minecraft. Uh, you you um, act on your reading. You have to understand videos. That, that's quite important with the uh, Schmolzitz, for example. I actually went to visit them in Croatia and uh, Philip told me that uh, they used to watch videos about Minecraft without understanding them uh, because they're Croatian, right? And they didn't know English at the time. But he said the language emerged. So that's acquisition. Oh, and this last one I just uh, added, listening to Phil's talk. Minecraft encourages informal learning. That's why I showed you uh, Rose's blog a moment ago. So that, that was one I hadn't thought of. Thank you, Phil. Um, OK, one example of critical thinking. Uh, triangulation cartography. Cri uh, cartography exists in Minecraft, but the triangula triangulation part was my idea. So when you pick up a map, it looks like this. Um, you've got a dot in the corner, which is where you are on the map. And this is what you're trying to find. You're trying to get here. Now, if you pick up the map, that dot could be anywhere. It could be, up, you know, it's to the north and west of where you're trying to reach. So we have what we call a dynamic map. This dynamic map in this view has a north-south orientation this way. So if I want to go on this map southeast to try to find what I'm looking for here, it's going to be in this direction. Now I can warp over to another place and pick up the map over here. This is where I warp to and find out that it's more or less to the west and maybe slightly north of where I'm trying to go. So um, you triangulate and you can then approach where you want to go on that map. Let me show you that in video, if I can get over to it. Here we go. Okay, so let me just go here, which is pretty much the video I want to find. I hope it all plays smoothly. smoothly. Am I still sharing? Can you hear my video? This is the map we found. All right, can you hear it okay? On that shipwreck. Okay, whoops. Uh, and the, sh the map shows us Let's see if we, okay. we can show where we're pointing. This is two minutes. So I'm looking to the east right now. And uh, the, the map, that little dot in the corner of the map, the upper Notice you have a HUD left corner device. is where we are now. It tells us that we're way off the map. You get all this data about so where you are. So to get more onto you the map, we have to, to go uh, more to the direction south, more headed. to the east. Could be, let me see if no, I just walk just this. Jumped in the video I've jumped if I can to walk right on top of it where I'm now at the destination okay so so apparently notice the dot is now like pretty much on right the X here I, I can't I've got to figure out where is maybe it? it's just at the edge I'm trying to fine-tune the getting so the maybe dot we into dig the X. out the so I'm sort of on top of it right now I'm talking to my wife by the way um, that's uh, Bobby Bear so maybe it's here down here in a moment below here See where I'm right Here's here? Bobby. Yeah. Okay, don't dig straight down. Uh, well, you'll, you'll be okay. Okay. But what we'll do is we'll... She'll be okay because she's wearing an enchanted helmet. Dig here. Help her breathe underwater. Just right, dig straight down, this, you're liable to go in this place right here. Yeah, maybe maybe all around this area. But where we're standing, maybe we do a circle around us. So we're trying to find buried treasure here using a map. This is so gamified. Oh, I want to get this treasure. Um, what am I learning? Let's see. Don't, well, if you're uh, with students, you maybe using like try not to let learning. water in. I'm, that's not warning, Bobby. There. Don't so don't cut away. Uh, cut don't, away. Don't block the dam. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. because the water is gonna get flood in if we're not careful. So. Let's see if we how far down we can go. Oh, look ah, at that! We found it. Look at that! Wait, wait, right. wait! Cool. See that? There it is! Yay! Yay! We yep. found it. All right. Okay. Shall we open? Let's open. Ah, I opened it. Yay. Oh, it's got diamonds. 
Cooked salmon. Oh, Let's Cooked empty salmon. this. Let's empty this sucker. Just take take what you want. You can pile okay. the, the irons on top of them. I've already got some iron. So we deserve it. Let's just take all this. We found the buried treasure. Yeah. Bobby's feet. Okay. So um, just to continue. Oh, so I, I got something to tell you. The audio is louder than my voice. Okay. Well, that's okay. Doesn't really matter. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> Uh, all right, so anyway, I'm going to continue in the video just a little bit because it shows two other things. One thing, we're here at uh, at my house, our house. We have a farm here. Uh, there are animals here. There are lots of sheep. From sheep, we can get wool. We can make beds. Beds will help us uh, sleep. And sleeping is if something bad happens to you, you go back to where you slept last. So it's you engineer your spawn point. Just, uh, you know, you engineer all that. So Bobby's going to give the cows wheat. Let's see what happens. Now, by the way, on the I've got wheat growing here. Uh, that's another story. I'm, gonna, I'm okay. So let me just show you how we. Uh, and another thing too, in the dynamic map, you can see where we are. We're up at our house up here. So I like to orient myself on that dynamic map. Okay, here we go. Feeding cows, and there see should the, be little cows yeah. pop out of here. The cows. Had hearts. I saw a little cow behind Yeah, us. see the baby? Yeah, there you Yay, go. The baby's there's the right baby. in the middle. Hey, baby cow. And there's the baby. <laughs> Yay. There he is. We got a baby cow. Hi, cow. All right. Okay, in this next segment, just one, one more short segment, this is a place that Sura built, and she made a a place in the water. You have to go into the water. You notice here there are hearts on, this shows, sorry, there's bubbles. It shows me if I'm underwater, if those bubbles start disappearing, it means I'm running out of breath. Now to get into this place, it's a little bit challenging because you have to sink down to the bottom and then you have to come out at the bottom and into the cave. And she's also built a water slide here all the way down to the very low levels where you can get resources. Let's see how that works. So, are you going, Bobby? Okay, Bobby um, is there. Okay, Bobby's giving up. She's going up. Okay. We. What is that? Mirai, I got down there. I. Oh, there we go. There's I got it. I got out. I'm there. Okay. Now. So, if you want to TP to us, Bobby, you can, or you can try that. Yep. I'm okay. So, uh, I think that's enough for right now. Uh, there is a. Okay. Yes. Okay. I was just checking the text chat if there's anything. Um, all right, so back to my presentation. Let's see if I can get over to it. Oh, Hi, everyone. Sorry. I'm Vince. I can't get off of the slide. Oh, there we go. Okay. So uh, Sura, who made that water slide, also uh, just some other game-based, uh, games-based as opposed to gamified, where teachers control the environment, she made or she found something called a, a, a Mars lander. And on the day that the NASA rover touched down on Mars, she posted this. She invited us all to come in and bring our students to this Mars rover and let our students come, come to Mars and drive the rover around on Mars. So, hey, that's a pretty cool thing to do. So uh, just another example of how a teacher who is able to use the environment as we are learning in EVO Minecraft MOOC year after year, then that skill can be used to apply it to the students. Okay, so uh, Rose, I showed you her journal a moment ago. It's a really nice read. There's a link to it right there. She also had something she posted on uh, March 9th, I think. It must have been International Women's Day. She had uh, a lesson where you could travel to Pakistan to help Malala rebuild a school. So that's also a world you could enter and uh, and uh, you know use that with uh, with your students. More from Rose. Okay, there's uh, there's um, something called Mine Academy. She's created something called Mine Academy. You can learn more about it now by clicking on that video. Um, she, um, uh, I'm not going to go into this. However, I'll show you Jane Shen's uh, article 
on uh, language of using uh, the a language study by putting Matty and Emmanuel together in world. And uh, she did a language study about that, the language that students use uh, pegged to Paul Nation's, um, you know, word lists. So you can also read that if you want. I'm going to move on a little bit here. Oh, sorry. Okay, there we go. Oh, this is this is kind of good though. Let's let's look at what Finch is doing. Finch is trying to teach me how to use redstone. So let's have a look at this. Speed it up a little bit. And then you can set up. See here how I did. If the repeater connects to another repeater, it'll still work. So if we break this one here and add another repeater, it'll still work. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, basics of redstone, I guess? <laughs> mm -hmm. right-click so, yeah, to set have... up the delay. Ah, okay. So, and now if you set them both too far to ahead. There we go. Okay. maximum uh, 10. Oops. Oh, no. Which... That's okay. I'll repeat. I'll put the target. But... Okay. You got a target for me. Okay. <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> oh, fix it. Okay. Sure. okay. I'm there learning too. I, I missed, I missed mm -hmm. uh, what I was looking for. You've got it. With EV... This is actually what I was trying With to do. With EVO, <laughs> the redstone doesn't really work, so you've got to make it come around. It has to touch the, the redstone lock uh, directly for it to work. Mm-hmm. Now. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now. And now, shoot the target. <laughs> All right. Yay. Whoa. Okay. okay. So now then. All right. So that was just, uh, he's trying to explain to me enthusiastically how uh, redstone works, which is a complicated thing in Minecraft. Okay, let's see if I can Ooh, get over to the here. next one. No. Uh, oh, there we are. Oops, stop that. Okay, this is a guy named Walton Burns who joined us in one of our uh, videos and one of our uh, lessons early on and then left us and he came back a little bit later and explained how he's been using Minecraft with his son, keeping in touch with us. It's just a, a, a he, he, uh, found this uh, Minecraft survival challenge work, uh, worksheet, which he's using with his son. And um, he shared that with us. And this is just a, an example of how um, lurking is worthwhile. Okay, let's see. okay, so now then, this is the last presentation we did in, uh, at the, at the uh, TESOL conference. You can play it here, but uh, we went on. We took. A, we went on a virtual tour, and I made a transcript of that tour. It was so interesting the discussion we had. That let me just show you this uh, transcript of the tour. Um, okay, so I used the CC captions and downloaded them and stripped out the uh, the timestamps and just kept copies and annotated a little bit here. So I, I highlighted in red things that I thought were worth pointing out. And so that's about, uh, we were talking about uh, Laura's uh, rover. Let's see. Um, what, what, how, do, how does this work? Let's see. Uh, the question was, do you need to know about, um, do we need to know how to use Minecraft. Don Carroll thinks, no, um, you don't have to be the expert. You can get the kids doing their own thing without controlling it. He feels the greatest value of Minecraft uh, rather than the teacher programming lesson uh, is to let things happen that the kids are largely controlling the kids. You know, they're guiding, the, they're, you're the guide on the side. And uh, I said, kids love to explain what they're doing. I think I just showed that with Finch. Um, Oh, this is interesting. One kid had built a bunch of NASA jet rockets. This is one of the VSTE sessions. And you could go into the rockets and travel into them. Let me just show you this and then I'll leave off this. But this is, this is a really interesting um, uh, transcript to read. Uh, just actually got it processed myself just recently. 
Okay, so there's a video. I think this is a video. I'm not sure if there's a video or not. But anyway, uh, this is, these are the. Oh, yeah, no. Okay, no. This is, uh, this is a place where kids. This is the, the where the kid built the rockets. So he built. Uh, no, it's another place. Okay, yeah. That's a, these are some of the things that the kids built, though. Uh, pixel art. Uh, uh, town. Uh, this is a. a I think. A, maybe a replication of Auschwitz or something like that that one of the kids created. And, um, oh, a game that uh, you can piece together uh, parts of a story. The stories are posted on the wall and the kids have to put the stories in order. So they have to manipulate the stories back into order. It's kind of like an old story. Um, there was a, a roller coaster ride here that you can, that, that's always a fun thing. And this is the one about the rockets. So this kid built these rockets to scale and you could travel. If you go in creative, you can travel through them and you can see all the detail inside. He really, that's a pretty phenomenal thing to do. Okay, I see that I'm down to my last minute. So let me just wrap up here. Okay, so pop over here. Oh. Every time I do that, I, okay. So this is one reason that Minecraft works. Uh, Earl Steve said it very well in 1982. The quality of learning that takes place when we focus our attention only on the items to be learned is different from and probably inferior to the quality of learning that is incidental to something else we're trying to do. But that's the whole theory of game, gamified learning right there, or, game, or games-based learning. So um, if you want more information, uh, I showed you this uh, this page, which shows details of the 13 video snippets, uh, how they illustrate the affordance of, of Minecraft that was in one of my slides. There's a Pedagogy of Minecraft page where I show where moderators have published over the years, the seven years, given presentations on Minecraft. And um, don't forget, you can follow the slides. Uh, with all the links in the in the text chat, and I think that's maybe all. Oh, that's it right there. Okay, thank you. I might have gone forty seconds over. All right.